بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continue on in our discussion about Eid Eid al-Fitr specifically the Eid at the end of Ramadan the beautiful time of celebration a time of happiness a time of time of as we mentioned from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh al-yawm qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the Eid yawm yawm akl wa sharb wa dhikr Allah azza wa jal or kama qala nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the Eid that they that this blessed time that these two Eid days that we have yearly are the times for eating and drinking and remembering Allah Azza wa Jal not feasting and being uh having bad habits of course always keeping within the Islamic bounds enjoying uh the food and drink and enjoying uh the things that are lawful for us in within accordance with the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and regarding the Eid the ulama they differ over whether it's an obligation or not and according to the madhhab of imam ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala and may allah have mercy upon all the ulama of islam the ulama of ahl sunnah that imam ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala held the view that eid that it is fard al kifai meaning that as long as a group of the muslims held the eid prayer then the uh, sin would uh, not there wouldn't be no sin on the rest of the community so there would be no sin on the community as long as a group of the muslims upheld this duty and some of the other ulama said that it is uh that it is sunnah mu'akkad is something that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a recommended sunnah that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not miss and so forth so we're not going to really discuss that but we're going to more look at the importance of trying to be at the Eid and that it was so important that even the uh the women the uh women who are menstruating and so forth take place and enjoy the Eid uh as well they enjoy the Eid celebration of course not going on the musalla as we're going to see in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam an ummi atiyata نسيبة الأنصارية رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت أمرنا تعني النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن نخرج في في العيدين العواتق وذوات الخضور وأمر الحيد أن يعتزلن مصلى المسلمين رواه بخاري ومسلم وفي اللفظ كنا نؤمر أن نخرج يوم العيد حتى نخرج نخرج البكرة من الخضر خضرها وحتى نخرج الحيث فيكبرن بتكبيرهم ويدعون بدعائهم يرجون بركة ذلك اليوم وتهرته وتهرته رواه بخاري in this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these hadith alayhi salatu wasallam in the first hadith which it's the hadith of um atiya radiyallahu ta'ala anha that she said the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us to go out for the eid prayer and he commanded the even the young women in the beginning meaning those women who had just become mature the young shabat the women that maybe ha- had just became women and also those women who uh those women that were were covering uh those women that were covering and the the virgin women who were also uh uh who were who were covering in and protecting themselves and still at a young age and also he commanded the menstruating women that they should stay away from the place of prayer they should stay away from the place of prayer of the muslims and this was collected in bukhari and muslim and in another narration she said 
we were ordered to go out for the Eid prayer until even even the uh, virgins from the, 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 the women who were ordered to wear hijab and even the women who were menstruating and that they could make the takbir you know they would say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd they, they would make the takbirat that is mashru' and they would supplicate the supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his the blessings of that day and its purity and this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim in this hadith with these different alfaz of the hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are immense benefits showing us showing us that the believing women are not restrained on this day and we're going to talk about in detail from the benefits from Shaykh Ali Basam rahimahullah ta'ala and what he said regarding this hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so let's take a look at some of the things some of the benefits the Shaykh mentions here he says the first thing is and this is according to the rai of the Shaykh he said the wujus wujub salat al-eid hatta ala nisa fi zahir al-hadith he said that the apparent meaning of this hadith shows it that it's an obligation because as we've said countless times that al amr you feed the wujub whenever you have a command in the shara from the Quran or from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the origin of that, 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 that command is that it is an obligation meaning that when we hear, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered us to do something when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the Almighty ordered us to do something then it is a, a, an obligation upon us unless there's other evidence from the Quran and Sunnah to show that it's not an obligation that it maybe it's mustahab or uh, goes to one of the other ahkam so he said that the the apparent meaning of this hadith is that it's an obligation to make salat al eid for the women uh, for for the women as long as and then he says ala shart so this is beautiful ala shart ala yakhrajanna mutabarjat mutaatirat li wurud an nahi an dhalika wa la'allahu mustahab fi haqqihinna wa yakun amruhunna min bab al hadd ala fi'l al khair so, uh, the Shaykh said that the apparent meaning of this hadith is that it's an obligation upon the believing women. And he said, on, on the condition, so here's the shart, with the condition that they do not leave their homes uh, exposing themselves. Meaning, wearing pants, meaning wearing just a khimar, wearing not, basically not wearing hijab. And, and, and tight fit, fitting clothing. So even a woman can wear an abaya and things like this, but maybe it's tight. So the women should not do that ever. That is haram, impermissible. So the Sheikh said that under the condition that they do not leave their homes showing themselves their beauty off, you know, with tight clothes, exposing their bodies and so forth, and wearing perfume. So this is also something very important do the believing women should not wear perfume outside the home and that's all the time it's not befitting of them because the hijab the purpose of it is to actually to uh, uh, protect yourself from attracting men to prevent from attracting men so of course perfume not wearing proper hijab uh, wearing tight fitting clothing this does the opposite of the hijab even if a woman is covered it, sometimes it's as if they're naked because they're probably some of some of them don't wear anything underneath or they wear tight fitting jeans or tight fitting clothing and so all it is is just a black garment over them as if they're wearing black lingerie وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ may Allah protect us and protect the believing women from this but ahla iltizam those people who are trying to adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah who want the reward of Allah do not cause fitna for uh, the men nor do they cause fitna and harm for themselves by gaining this sin so the Shaykh said that under the condition that the women do not beautify themselves and they do not wear tight fitting clothing and they do not wear perfume that and that's due to the fact that it's mentioned in other ahadith prohibiting those things then he said it is pro it is 
uh, more than likely it is mustahab that is recommended that they go from their right to go attend the Eid prayer. And this hadith is actually an encouragement for them to do so. Another benefit, and to participate in the khayr, in the goodness. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet wasallam is it also shows us the obligation to stay away for the, for the hayth, the woman who's menstruating, to stay away from the masjid, so that way she does not, uh, and the, pl- the place where they're praying, you know, in the, the prayer area, so that they do not <coughs> spread any uh, filth. And of course we know in this day and t- time, it's easier for the women to pr- protect themselves by wearing, um, uh, wearing pads and, and so forth like this. But however, they should avoid the place where the prayer is actually being prayed, the musalla itself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, another thing that we gain from this hadith the Shaykh mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that the musalla of Eid, that it has the hukum of the masjid, of the masajid. He said that the musalla of Eid, the place where we pray, that it also has the, the same ruling as the masajid. So praying at that, that place uh, has the same rulings. And the Shaykh didn't mention any details with regards to that of exactly what he means by that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Another benefit of this hadith is a very important benefit for us, for some people who may have the misconception. And the Shaykh mentioned that the hai, the woman who's the menstruating woman, that she, it is not prohibited for her to, of course, supplicate to Allah and make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anytime a woman is menstruating, she can still make dhikr on her tongue. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, wa bahamdihi, subhanallah, radeem. And those dhikr for the day of Eid, of course. She can make the dhikr. And she can supplicate to her Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking for his favor, asking for his mercy, asking for what she needs, asking for what she wants. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala. The last benefit the Shaykh mentioned... Rahim Allah Ta'ala. He said also this hadith illustrates for us the benefit of the day of Eid and that it is a time when uh, you should supplicate often and that be idnillah that your supplication will be accepted during this time. It's a time of barakah. And that also uh, hearing the people make the tekbirat with uh, loud voices. This is also a time of dhikr with uh, loud, in a, in a loud fashion, in a way to show one of the signs of Islam. And it is a time of great brotherhood and a blessed time where we unite the believers. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us to deal with the different fitness that we have, uh, especially here, really in fact around the world, but especially here uh, in, the, in the West, because often you find the different communities uh, celebrating their Eid separately and even at different times. And this is what's even worse, is that not only can they not get together, but unfortunately they even calculate Ramadan when they should begin their fast differently. Some they calculate by doing some sort of yearly calculations. They've calculated for the next 20 years their their times they're going to fast because they rely on uh, you know the non-Muslim calculations, their form of calculations, which are not entirely accurate. But rather what would be better is to look at and actually cite the moon and so forth. So we see that the people have various ways of calculation and unfortunately there's no unity in the the various communities. So we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the future will bless us to come together and enjoy this Eid together and be as one body, at least in the Eid. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with Tawheed, Ikhlas ala Sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Thabat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.